Hello and welcome to The Short Answer. I'm Dr. Sue Mortar of Mortar Institute, where we are bridging science, spirit, and human possibility all the time. We do so in a variety of ways. We offer coursework. We offer this particular uh, program for you um, every month in an attempt to allow you to know that there are some answers out here that can pull things together for you in a way that you might not be aware of. Um, every aspect of your life is to be addressed in this way. It has to do with your relationships. It has to do with how to heal yourself. What we speak about has to do with you awakening to a higher level of consciousness altogether where you're not constantly putting out brush fires, but rather you are focusing on um, a truth, a greater truth, a higher truth that you are able to see life from a bird's eye view, a different perspective. And when that happens, uh, what we get to do is have a different experience with every single occurrence in our lives. We then become masterful at those experiences um, long before we normally would have. We don't have to continue to go through trial and error and create what we don't want in order to figure out what we do want in life. We can cut to the chase. What this work is about and what I am interested in sharing with you is uh, exactly how to awaken to your true self, to the essential self, the soulful self, which you may have read about in the Energy Codes book that was released in March. If you haven't um, um, delved into the book yet, I would highly recommend that you do because I, we get letters and, and emails and phone calls every day from people all over the world who want to know more about what they're reading there, that they want to implement, they want to practice, they want to teach it and share it, and we're providing ways for people to do all of that. Through the coursework that we offer and the trainings that we offer, uh, including teaching you how to uh, share that information with other people. As I'm interested in creating a conscious community on this planet, I'm interested in allowing people to wake up through their life experiences, not in spite of their life experiences, and include their life experiences as part of the glorious um, opportunity of being human to experience that what we formerly would have thought of as something negative or horrible that we have to overcome, rather to think about life as uh, supporting us to recognizing our magnificence, recognizing our true greatness in the world. And so uh, we do that through the Energy Codes coursework. If you're not engaged in that, I would encourage you to get engaged in that in some way. Uh, let us know how we can be of service to you. Any questions that you have just by contacting us at info at drsuemortar.com. So we're here this, in this moment for the short answer. And normally I just come up with a topic and roll some things out for you. And uh, I'm going to do that in just a moment. But there are a couple of announcements that I want to make regarding places that we're going to be that you might be able to connect with us if you're looking for a community to support you in your own life process, your own personal or spiritual development, your own evolution, uh, bringing, bringing your own consciousness into your own hands and doing something about how life can be better. Um, and so, so we're going to be in a variety of places. So there are a couple of things that I wanted to mention. One is we have an amazing opportunity for you to learn the level one of the Energy Codes coursework online. It's the first time that I've actually taught the, the literal coursework in an online program. And so we're sponsoring that through Mortar Institute. And you can... Um, you can absolutely plug right into that if you are interested by going to um, www.energycodesonline.com, energycodesonline.com, and you can register for that. It's a five-week course that'll be uh, uh, three hours, the first, the first session, and then the modules after that are a couple of hours. It's kind of once a week, basically, um, for uh, the, the duration of the five weeks and allowing you to be exposed to this work, have time to practice certain things, and then we'll come back and teach you some more and do that uh, with some homework for you to do for yourself. Homework that you do while you're living life, not you're going to have to sit down and, and fill out homework assignments for me. It's not about that. It's about you learning how to build neurocircuitry inside of your own system so that you can perceive a greater version of yourself than you currently do. It's about getting underneath the story of your life and learning how to work with the raw energy that's traversing through your body and traversing through your life in a manner that's either working for you or it's not. And if it's not, there's a reason for that. And it's a circuitry issue. So I'm going to teach you how to build the circuits for all of that to show up differently so that you change your life by changing how you master the energies that are running through it. So um, 
it's an amazing process that I absolutely love to share with people. So that's the course is in October, and you'll have time to still sign up for this right away. It's just in a few days from uh, when you're when you're seeing this, and so so uh, now is the time. Energycodesonline.com. Uh, some other things that I'm doing for those of you that are in the community that. Uh, are already practitioners that are facilitators or best practitioners, etc. Uh, we have a program, Conscious Leadership, that I'll be teaching, teaching you how to do, do business with integrity, how to be a leader in your community with full authenticity, how to show up and deliver the things that you know that you've always wanted to share with people in a manner that they can hear, that they can respond to, and that they can engage in and participate. So that program is in LA, and it's in April, um, so you might be interested in that. Um, I'm also doing something in L.A. in Hollywood um, late in the month, on October 26th, um, a, a, um, a, a gathering called Heaven and Earth Oasis for veterans, where we'll be taking the Energy Codes book and delivering them to for free to the veterans and teaching them how to begin to do this work for uh, stress management and post-traumatic stress issues that exist in our culture. So uh, you might want to come and help us out with that, or if you're new to the work, come and lean in and listen in, in those terms. It would be very beneficial for you. We also have um, the sacred science of sound that we're doing in L.A. in November. It might be something that you're interested in. You know, we were made of sound, vibration, and light, and that's it. And as we start to work with tones and vibrational frequencies through crystal bowls and tuning forks and those kinds of things, those frequencies start to elevate our energetic and when our energetic body starts to become elevated, it rearranges how it's processing information. So we heal. Ancient healing chambers in ancient Egypt, which uh, we speak about when we go to Egypt, um, uh, are, are well known for atoning, uh, retuning, basically, the alignment of the energy frequencies of the human system. So you might be interested in sacred science of sound. Uh, we have a lot of different um, people that are coming uh, speaking about sound and, the, and the, the healing frequencies and tones that are um, in, involved in that. So, and, and then last thing I wanted to mention, I have a whole list of things here, but I want to get on to our short answer, is the Body Awake Yoga Retreat. Uh, it's in Indianapolis, and it's in November, and it's November 17th through the 21st, and it is um, all day for five days, teaching you each individual asana that is relevant to what we're turning on and lighting up inside of the 12 chakra system that we're working with within the energy codes. So I'm going to be teaching you a few asanas, teaching you how to do them, how to know that, that you're doing it correctly. And then teaching you what it's doing for the endocrine system or for the brain or for the respiratory system or for the deep level embodiment that we're seeking through all of this work. And then we'll go and learn some more asanas, some more positions and do the same thing. We're going to help each other learn how to do it and have a, a tremendous understanding of this by the time we leave that retreat. It's something I'm deeply passionate about and I know that it is transformative for people. Because when people engage in moving the body and bringing the mind onto the core of the body at the same time and breathing in a particular way while they're putting the body in a particular sacred geometry that allows the energy to move through it automatically, it elevates our consciousness rapid fire much faster than life experiences elevate our consciousness with all the bumps and bruises that come along with that trial and error of the bumper car version of life. So uh, you might be interested in the Body Awake Yoga Retreat in Indianapolis, so just let us know if you're interested in any of those things. Now, um, I'm sitting here in a room full of amazing people. It's a room full of amazing people. Uh, there's like 100 people in this room, a little over, and uh, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. They were sitting so quietly, it was making me a little bit nervous there for a minute, because like, what's going to happen when they open their mouths? So, so in this, we're here at level three in Indianapolis right now, and we are having an amazing first day of our level three retreat. In the first day of the level three retreat, 
we went boom, right in, deep. You know, people came up and said, I could go home right now. It's so amazing because uh, I think they were saying it was so amazing I got what I came for. <laughs> I hope they weren't saying, I, I'm, I could just leave. You know, there's nothing happening here. So um, it's, it's an amazing moment in time when we come together and we get to experience and share with each other uh, our own evolution, that we can, we can see it and, and feel it and and sense it and perceive it as it's happening. And that's what gets to happen in the live coursework. So I'm thrilled and honored that this amazing group of people have come together and are holding space for us in the short answer. And what I'm going to do today in the short answer is answer a question that came from someone who uh, wrote to us. Is, uh, is Glynis in the room still? I need to know the name of the person who... Jerry. Pardon? Jerry. Jerry. Jerry, this is for you. I think you're in England. I think you're in England. And this is for you, doll. Okay, so you wrote the question in about something that had come up and I didn't answer it because I said we were going to answer it in the retreat. And so here's one way for you to get the answer even though you weren't sitting in the retreat. So um, the question was multifold and it spoke to wanting to hear basically about self-love and also about codependency. And how do they relate? And, you know, can codependency be healed was part of, of the question that I remember. So, uh, so, Jerry, no, there's no hope for any of it. It's all you're stuck. That's it. <laughs> Boom. Forget about it. <laughs> no. Okay. So here's what happens. Self-love is something that happens not when we learn to love ourselves, but when we learn who we really are. And there's a distinction there that's very important. Self-love is not something that is most effectively done. It can be done that way, but the, it's not the most effective way to access self-love like this. I know I need to learn to love myself. When I love myself, there's two of me. When I love myself, there's two of me. You get that? I need to learn to love myself. So when someone is talking that way, they are identified as the mind, and they're speaking about the true self. And we don't want to continue to be identified as the mind, loving something other than ourselves. What we want to do is learn to be the true self. And when we do, ironically, there's no need to learn about love in that moment because we're made of love. We're made of vibrational frequency and we're made of light. We're made of light. Then when you start compressing light, it creates a vibration. The energetic of light, the highest form of energy is light. We spoke about that today. The highest vibrational frequency version of energy is light. And to get to physical form, we compress energy. So we compress light into, compress it and compress it and compress it and compress it, and eventually it becomes this body. It becomes me here in this compressed world called the third dimension. It's where it's more dense here. So we are here in this physical dimension, and we are, um, we are still light. We're just not aware of it. So what happens is when we learn to be the truth of who we are, we are actually the light in this realm. So on the way to compressing and compressing and compressing and compressing toward physical form, light becomes compressed, it become, energy becomes compressed, it vibrates. That first vibration that it creates is the vibrational frequency that we call love, love right? They're at level three, so they know the answer to this. But, all right. so, so we are love. We get that? We are conscious love in a body. That's what we are. When we are not identified as the mind, but rather we've peeled the mind off of us, like we land and we splat. And in the splat, our mind goes one way, our body goes another, our breath goes another, and we go face down. We are awareness. We go face down, boom, and we come up and the mind is stuck to us. We're stuck to the mind. We're attached to it. Now, an interesting way of depicting this is if I show you a drawing, it's going to show you layers of who we are. And in those layers, there is a place where this splat happens. Let me see if I can find that. I think I have it right here. All right. So in this, maybe you can see that there. In this drawing, there are layers and layers and layers and layers and layers that are coming to this physical being in the center. On the way in here, we splat right here at the red line. We splat 
right there and we are dispersed and we get stuck right there at the level of the mind. So we have this identity of ourselves right there because we can't handle the frequencies. It's, a, it's, a, it's an explanation that's a little longer than we have in this moment. But right now what we want to get is that, that we are love coming in. We're love coming in. Light is becoming love and is trying to land here in physical form. And because we are attached to the mind, we are unable to experience the wholeness of our being. And so in that moment, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. In that moment, what happens is we get stuck right here. Now, parts of us come all the way in and are landing in the physical body. But I want you to picture yourselves in this, inside the middle of this. You're the body in the middle of this. But imagine that your hands were reaching out and holding on to this gunk that you see right here. Okay? So you're holding on for dear life. You're holding on because you're stuck in your head and you're holding on for safety. You're holding on for some sense of okayness, right? And if you were to let go, you would drop in and actually experience an immense sensation of love, an immense sensation of light and love landing all in one place. And you'd be able to experience it because your mind would be directed inward instead of thinking that it is who you are. You got that? So, so interestingly, it's exactly the same thing. What I just described is exactly the same thing as codependency. Codependency happens like this. If I'm attached to these things that I'm holding on to, I'm attached. I have attachments. And because I'm attached in that way, I'm attached to ideas, I'm attached to ways of being, I'm attached to how things have to be in order for me to be okay. I have all kinds of conditions and attachments. Does this make sense? Okay? So, does it make sense to you, Jerry? Is it okay? We got it? We got it? Okay, good. All right. So, um, so when I'm attached like that, I can only experience certain parts of me. I can't experience my wholeness. I'm only going to experience here in my physical body the parts of me that landed all the way here. I'm not going to experience the parts of me that are still hanging out there in the mental body, in my head, or in this theoretical world. I don't get to actually have the experience of being whole and and free and uh, creative. I instead feel incomplete and, um, and, uh, and filled with conditionality. So I never experience unconditional love. I experience only certain circumstances that make me feel kind of almost safe. And, and here is the idea. When I'm attached, I'm only experiencing part of who I am. I'm going to be needing you or you or you to fulfill the experiences that of me that I'm unable to create for myself because only part of me is here. Is this track for you? So now I'm not only attached here, I'm attached to you too. I'm attached to anything and everything that can give me an experience of wholeness, either temporarily, um, and it is only ever temporarily, but uh, we think that it's required forever. So we choose jobs in a codependent manner. We choose, if, you, if I'm doing this and you're doing this same thing and we find each other, we're in a tangled up mess. Can you see how that's going to happen? So I'm attached to you and you're attached to me and I want you to fulfill what I'm not doing for myself and I don't even know it because it's all happening at this subconscious level and I grew up inside of that and you're over there doing the same thing. So we are codependent, attached to each other in an attempt to bargain for our wholeness. Negotiate for our wholeness. If you'll behave this particular way, then I'll feel okay. Well, I'm not going to behave that way until you behave this way. And then, then we start to see the rumble of codependency, where there's extreme unhappiness and extreme frustration for reasons other than we think. We think that the reasons of the extreme unhappiness and the extreme frustration and the conflict that are being generated are because of the other person. Because we've empowered 
the attachments. We, we've left our power in what we're holding on to instead of letting go and finding our own true power. Our own full, whole self can then be experienced. And so the, the question is, can codependency be helped? Well, it can absolutely be helped. And what we have to do, all we have to do is surrender the ideas that we have to have anything to be okay, that we have to have circumstances be a certain way to be okay, that we have to prove ourselves before we can ever be okay, that we have to overachieve or we have to earn more money or we have to have more people like us or we have to have more followers on Facebook or, you know, whatever those things are, friends in, in Facebook or social media, those kinds of crazy things that are, that are creating this externalized identity we got to let go of them. We have to let go of them. Now, that idea is pretty scary for someone who's never done that, right? So what we have to do in the meantime, which is what we teach in the energy codes, is cultivate a sense of loving presence inside the core, inside the body. Cultivate a sense of loving presence. Now, remember I said you're made of love. So all you have to do is bring your presence, your conscious awareness into your core. And when you do, you begin to have a sense of love that you've never felt before. And it's all by letting go of what you think you need. So one of the things that we're working with is, is allowing ourselves to feel things that we've never felt before. And as we begin to allow ourselves to feel some of the energies that we've been afraid to feel, that we've avoided feeling, that we've tried not to feel, by doing that, we begin to build a sense of, oh, I can be okay. I don't have to run from this feeling forever. And when we do that, we start to cultivate a sense of self. What happens automatically is we start to, little by little, let go of that because we're having something wonderful here that we're cultivating, that we're more interested in, and we become more um, um, completely present here. When we do that, I need you or you or you to behave in a certain way less and less and less because I'm okay. I've found my wholeness. So it's okay if you continue to behave the way that you do. I have more patience for it. It's okay if you continue to do this and do that and do that. I can be available to you because I'm not needing you to be a certain way for me to be okay in the first place. Dig? So it's absolutely unpackable, this idea of codependency. And codependency is something we grow up inside of. We don't even know we're there. How do we know if we're codependent? If you're in something that is constantly ricocheting, and constantly at battle, and constantly at war, then there's some part of that that is hooked in. Now, I want to say one final thing about it, that that hooked inness is good. Codependency is good until it's not. It's serving you until it's not. It's part of a grand plan that is teaching you how to find yourself with grace and ease. And so the sooner you allow yourself to embrace the idea that codependency is developed here, uh, as you begin to embrace that idea, the whole thing will start to unpack and is no longer necessary because you're finding who you are. So you don't want to outrun codependency because you're just going to become dependent on something else if you're trying to outrun this one, right? And so, uh, the, you know, the story goes. So uh, we begin to embrace ourselves and love into these circumstances and everything begins to change. We start to unfold in a beautiful, beautiful way. Excuse me. <clears throat> and as we do that, we solve what we used to think was a problem. So, this is good. It was almost short, but it's certainly, <laughs> it's certainly here for you. And it is with great joy that I speak into these things and allow you to put some pieces together. If you're interested in delving in a little more deeply, we're about to go into the master class, and I'll get my voice back by then, and we'll have some answers to some questions from these fine people. If you're not uh, a gold member, you can click on this button below what you're looking at right now and and sign up and join us for a deeper, richer, longer answer um, as we dive into the master class. I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, many blessings, much love, and namaste. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.